Episode 327 of the Two Thick Pod, your home for all things sports, cards, and levity. I am checked out. I fly to Vegas in the morning, so quite frankly, let's just go ahead and close it up and get the hell up out of here. It's good seeing you all. I will talk to you later. <laughs> welcome, welcome, Two Thick Fam. Um, we are welcome with Dennis. Um, we had I actually didn't go, so Dennis is gonna probably give me some crap. Um, but the reckless family, Courtney and Jeremy, went to the card show on uh Avery Bo- Avery's box Avery's shoe box card show this weekend. Um, plenty of deals. I saw some content and uh, there seemed to be a lot of foot traffic, a lot of foot traffic. So I'm kind of excited to hear from you guys. Packed, Manny. Absolutely packed. The flow of traffic was good. Cash was flying. Cards from, you know, quarter bins up to five figure cards and a lot of TCG, man. That, that, that spot is starting to blow up with TCG, whether it's Dragon Ball or Pokemon and some of like Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, there must be a good promoter behind this show, bringing in this nice, nice eclectic mix. Decent one, right? Uh, handsome. Kind of handsome. Man. I know that much for sure. <laughs> man, he doesn't go to card shows anymore. That's not no. his thing. He's, hey, he's too good I, for card shows. I have sick kids. I sent you a message of like what I was dealing with like five minutes ago. Um, it's it's bad. Did you not get it? I have twice as many children who project. 10 times more bodily fluids. I mean, the, the older ones probably don't as much. Well, they're, 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 they start drinking and then you I get like, soon they're going to be doing <laughs> gonna be drinking and it's going to be different type. Of <laughs> so, Dennis, your show, you take a lot of pride putting it in. The one thing that I told you before we dipped out on Friday or Saturday, excuse me, after spending, Courtney and myself stayed behind to help clean up. Manny, of course, did not help clean up did not participate or help the show in any sort of capacity was best show in Michigan. And this is not the first time I've heard that show. And I'm a big believer where there's smoke, there's fire. Uh, What's your, what do do you think, man? What's going on? Well, I'm not, I mean, it could be, it's definitely up there. So modest. So very modest. It's I have people like come it. to our table to tell us that they came specifically because they've been hearing about how great this show is. I have been getting a lot of people that are coming from, you know, hours away that come into the shop. And I probably did six or seven interviews for like TikTok and Instagrams and YouTubes and. <laughs> MMA promoting stuff and whatever else uh, on Saturday. So there's definitely a, an influx of influencers out there that are stopping into the show that are, you know, streaming from the show. They streamed from the shop. They were, you know, in groups like showing the showcases and, and selling stuff right out of the showcase, which, I mean, that's fine. So, you know, good for you. Did a bunch of interviews for that, but there are a lot of people that are coming from farther away just because, you know, they're like, hey, I can't go to the Burbank show or Dallas, but I can drive two hours to Lansing, you know. So there's definitely a lot of people coming from far away, and we appreciate having them, and we're going to try and make it as good as we can. You know, one thing that that was very apparent to me is Courtney and I were standing there. Um, we didn't get to walk the show as much as possible because we were supposed to have a third person there to help us. And, you know, we just, we had to woman up and make it happen in, in the absence of one Manuel. The amount of cameras around, like this is truly becoming a show because if you're a content creator, you're not going to a podunk show and no disrespect to any upcoming show or anybody no, that puts no, on a no show. Disrespect, respectfully to the podunk shows. Yeah. <laughs> Cancel Jeremy now. <laughs> no, no, no. But you, you know what I mean? Like you wouldn't go to like a VFW to film content most likely. And the amount of people that were coming around filming content. Uh, and some of these people had like, I guess they had a million followers on YouTube and stuff like that. And, you know, obviously I'm old, so I don't know who the hell they are, but that speaks volumes to what, what's cooked in here in Michigan. And when I was over in California, I got to hear about how California is the greatest place in the world, that that's the only place that collects cards. And I'm like, 
man, people are sleeping on Michigan because Michigan's got some wild stuff going on. There's a lot of great shows in the Midwest. I mean, you know, obviously Dallas and the National and all that stuff are great, but, you know, Chicago's a good show. Lansing's a good show. Shipsy's a good show. You know, those are all Midwest shows, and, you know, we have money too, and we like our stuff, so. Yes, Midwest money is just as green as California money. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe a little greener now. Um, (laughs) uh, um, Matt actually got a hold of me because he kind of gets jealous because he lives in Louisiana. And he always asked, like, I wish my area had this many card shows um, because we they see us going to card shows every single week. Well, as Jeremy and Courtney put, Jeremy and Courtney go to card shows every single weekend, and Manny's been slacking them. But we have Garrett here um, saying Lansing was a good time, Pokemon moving like crazy. I had a ton of people come up and ask us about Pokemon and we just, that's not, we don't do Pokemon. So I, I was directing them to the table next to us. That was like insanely tons of Pokemon. Did, uh, Dennis, you, you were on a channel. I, and I think Jeremy's talking about the same guy. He has a million followers and uh, he came to your show after the last one. and was trying to do a trade up challenge with you. Um, the funny thing is, is I was watching that show, Jeremy and Courtney made an appearance as well. They were making out in the background, and I took a picture of it and sent it to them. So such a creep. So a million notice it. Saw Jeremy and Courtney making out in the background of this kid's video. It was it was the best. (laughs) If that's the only video they saw of Court and I, we're doing okay. (laughs) I was gonna say OnlyFans coming soon. (laughs) We've been talking about that. That would sell. That that would absolutely sell. Hobby only fans for Just not sure. At the Lansing show. I, we don't do adult stuff at the Lansing show. No, that's the back of your store, right? The back. The back. Hey, that's not part of the show, man. Yeah. <laughs> the first ever hobby casting couch. Yeah, I got the carpet for it in the store. So. Oh my god. You know, I've had like two people message me like this week, like, oh, is that, are you doing a hobby casting couch like twice? And now this, I'm like, I, what is happening? Yeah. Y'all are a mess. Well, it's a Jeremy, sign. Jeremy and I were promoting <laughs> that we were going to go to the Lansing show and put a couch and call it the Lansing show ca- casting couch. So that's probably what they were asking about. That makes more sense now. Cause I, I, must have, I wasn't at that show. That's the back of the Spencer. That Spencer sh- sh- uh, store was lit. It was fun. I they had tons of Pokemon stuff in there. I was like, oh, this is cool. Look at these t-shirts. So Dennis, let me ask you this. And this is something I actually meant to ask you the last time we had on, and we got sidetracked because Manny's unprofessional. When you're setting up and you're you're putting on the show, is your primary focus just making sure that it's a good show, or do you try to, you know, obviously make sure that you put on a good show, but also hope that, you know, you may be slaying a couple cards and have a a good show as well, setting up as a vendor? Uh, So I spent zero minutes at my show tables on Saturday. I didn't sit down behind the table one time. And uh, probably going forward, I'm just going to be set up in the shop and dealing with people in there because the amount of people that I had that were bringing – pokemon sports all that stuff into the store to you know sell trade whatever um or ask questions was i mean it was insurmountable you know for me to be able to do both and to walk around the show and ask people how they're doing you know shoot the shit whatever um that was definitely at a minimum because it was just too busy and me not having tables out there i think going forward is is going to at least give me an opportunity to take one thing off of my plate. Um, And I don't mind doing that just so, you know, I can have 160 people out there doing their thing and I, I have the shop. So that'll be, those will be my tables going forward. I can't confirm that because I went looking for you like a couple times and I couldn't find you. I'm like, man, he is too busy. So The rumor is, is when he's not at the table, his nephew's giving 50% discounts. Is what I did I'll, hear that. I yeah, so that. 
It's definitely possible. I'm not even there, you know. But I do, but I do know what's in the showcases, so yeah, you know, that's good. <laughs> what I, I I know we've said it before, but what I really love about the Lancer show is it's a you could tell every dealer um, that you bring in is kind of like together. They're they're good close friends, and no one's like button heads with the different people in the. Um, so I know Courtney's dealt with that in the past, um, about, uh, uh, another dealer getting upset with Courtney for no reason. Um, I do like that about it. It just seems like a family base, um, type of setting. There's a bunch of guys that like, they have their own little Island, like Bill and Jerry and Dale and Vern and Randy, like they all want to sit together. They, they have, a dozen tables all lined up in a row and around the backside just so they can, you know, work together, you know, watch each other's table while they're doing other things or making deals, things like that. And there's, there's definitely a lot of guys that, you know, have a bunch of tables with a bunch of their friends and come out and do their thing. So it's like, it's like a party, that middle section, those guys, I sit there and I watch them just like mess around I'm like, if this is your job, this is a great job to have. And to be clear, I've never ever had beef with anyone at Courtney a has show before. A whole bunch of hobby beef. Dennis. I I had a I had a guy come up and yell at me at a show one time, but it had nothing to do with anything that I did. And <laughs> so I want to put that out there. I've never ever had any hobby beef. So not even I mean, you, got rock, you got rocked by cardboard one time yeah, you, you know your hga video court yeah, my not, phones. Actually, people that's didn't not, like your people didn't like your nails at, i almost had beef at the lansing show dennis was trying to get me to fight some lady i'm like um <laughs> i'm not gonna do this i walk in he's like that's fine i'll just have courtney go. i'll have courtney kick your butt i'm like what <laughs> courtney's not <laughs> In my defense, that was my daughter's mom. So yeah, no, and she was so. It wasn't like, just was a like, random lady. <laughs> it would have been a lot cooler if it was Dennis. That's true. <laughs> yeah, that old Dennis just over there flinging them five hands. letter B words and then volunteering Courtney to get her ass whipped. <laughs> like, I'm like, I'm, I'm pretty sure she could kick my ass. I don't want to do this. <laughs> nah, she's all bark, no bite. You're fine. She's- she was that we were folding uh, uh, the tablecloths up at the end together, and Jeremy was like folding like one tablecloth to our like five, and then he uh, finished up. And he's like, "I folded all these tablecloths." To be clear, you guys, you and her, were not folding them. You were kind of just going like this. I was corner to corner, crisp, tight. I guarantee, if you go look at them, I took I took pride in my work, quality over quantity, Courtney. You also only folded the square ones. You would not fold a single round. <laughs> well, I mean, that was. I tried doing one. I spent 15 minutes messing with it. I said, "To hell with this. Leave it for the ladies." <laughs> yeah, that's why mine just get like kind of rolled up, and I just like it's fine. I'm, so I want to I want to talk a little bit about what goes into the day before, because we've okay. talked to a lot of people who set up card shows, and we always talk about the day of everything. You're posting videos the night before of everything you know, all the tables set up. Let's talk a little bit about what it takes to decide, you know, you have those guys like, oh, I want to be by this guy. I want to be by this guy. And I want this spot. I want that spot. How do you handle all of that? And let's talk a little bit about that. Cause I'm so curious how that works. Well, this, I have the list of, you know, the last show we had 167 tables. And so I'd look at the list and then basically it's just based on layout. I mean, if you do the same, if you do the show every month and you're like, Hey, I like this spot. It makes it easier for me to keep you in that spot. You guys have a spot, my spot, B spot, Ed spot, all these guys that do the show every single month. I know where they're going, but when we rotate out 50, 60 dealers, you know, some take a month off or two months off or whatever it is you know, then I have to fill in those gaps and everybody wants to be in the middle. Everybody wants to be on the main aisle. Everybody wants like, well, that's just not possible. So it gets filled in based on so-and-so has four tables, but there's only three spots left in this row. Obviously he's not going there. So I look at that and do that. It only takes us 
probably two and a half hours to set up uh, all the tables and the chairs and the, you know, skirts and everything like that. Um, and it takes me probably about that long to do the layout for everybody. Um, but other than that, I mean, it's, it's a process every day, just, you know, keeping everybody straight and, you know, making sure I'm organized with my list, which is not my strong suit. Um, but the day before is pretty much easy because I'm ready to go and we knock it out and take, taking it down, you know, the more help I have, the better. And usually we're out of there within two hours and going to Frank's, have a burger and celebrate. And then I go home and ice down my back and all that stuff because I'm old. Go home and die. That's, <laughs> That's what it. I do. I go put my feet up. I'm like, oh, my feet hurt so bad. And I didn't do half the work you did. Um, can we talk a little bit about how you find vendors? Are, do you have a waiting list now? Are there still people that you can't get in? Do you call if somebody cancels? Oh, yeah. I, I tell probably 30 people a month that were sold out. You know, I mean, I can rent more tables. I can... You know, I can sell 200 plus tables every show, but I like to keep it at a manageable number. I like to keep it, you know, kind of in close quarters where everybody can see everybody or at least see the end of the show and, you know, keep it all in a straight line pretty much from the back wall going forward. And, you know, the people that message me like on Friday, and ask for a table for the night for the show that's tomorrow that's just never gonna work you know you're you're gonna have to let me know at least two weeks in advance and if i have a spot it's first come first serve you know if you haven't done the show in six months and you know you want to do the show that's great but i'm gonna need to know about it as soon as possible has, has there been any future plans? I know you talked about it last last time we went live um, to doing the TCG since Courtney said the TCG world is getting more and more. And I know you kind of showed interest of doing a TCG show. Yeah, I would like to do like Pokemon Magic and comic books uh, and do one of those. And it's probably something that I'm planning for four or five months out just so – you know, because I'm I'm not the guy that's going to put together a show that has 20 tables at it just to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, if I can get 70, 80 tables, make it a legit show, get some get some hitters in there that, you know, people are going to want to come out to see. You know, I used to work for a card store back in the day who has, you know, more stuff than God and talk to him. And he's like, oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, I would do a big setup and. You know, there's there's a bunch of guys like Frankie and Dalton and all that that come to the show that set up with nothing but Pokemon. They would definitely be in. Uh, but getting the comic dealers, which is... I had a guy stop at our table and ask me about comics. Yep. Yeah. He was like, do you think that comics would do well at this show? And I'm like, I think so. I'm like, nobody's selling them. And it, the cross market between the TCG... <laughs> And the comic books is pretty, like, there's a lot of people that do it. I'm like, I personally have, um, because of some of my offshoot collections, like the Stranger Things and the Disney and, like, some of the Star Wars and Marvel stuff. Yes, Manuel has a ton of comic books. I'm ready, I'm ready for the comic books. You look like a kid. I, I've actually, I know that they've made, like, um, Stranger Things comics now. And with my Stranger Things, co like, collection going, now I just bought Nikes. I have the pop you know, the pops, I have the t-shirts that I've been picking up. So the next logical thing for me is if I'm at a show and there's Stranger Things comics, I'm definitely going to be scooping those up. So I think yeah. once you get into the space, it's just a matter of, you know, time before you're collecting other things that aren't just strictly cards. Yep. I've done a bunch of, I used to do a lot more comics than I do currently. Um, most of the people that collect comics, though, don't sell comics. And so trying to pick up comic collections is a lot more difficult than trying to pick up a sports card collection or a Pokemon collection. Uh, picking up a Magic card collection is also tough because the people that play Magic don't sell Magic. And so if you can find enough comics, enough Magic, enough Pokemon 
to have a legit setup. I mean, there is absolutely a market for it. It's just being able to procure enough inventory to have a viable setup. I get, I get, you know, I'm like one of those bugs that go towards the light with comic book stores. So I went into yours and I saw, um, you, he, Dennis has like, he's modest. He has like the Batman where it's the first appearance of Bane just out. And I'm like looking at it, like, do I buy it? Do I buy it? I had to slap myself and be like, I'm at a card show. Let me go back to the table. <laughs> so it, he does have some nice stuff in the back of his store. You just got to go wander in there. Manuel buys autographed jerseys and comic books at card shows and no cards at all. <laughs> yeah. that is, when he I, attends said show. When he goes that, to one. At Ship Shawana, some guy came up to me and asked if I wanted a Luca auto. And I was like, no, I'm not collecting Luca. And he's like, no, no, no. It's a framed jersey. And, uh, and so I got like a sweet framed jersey of uh, Luca. I was going to bring it to the show. Um, but, you know, kids. <laughs> So Jeremy and I oh. had one of the best shows that we've ever had at uh, this past Lansing show as far as um, consistency, the amount of cards that we ended up picking up, and the amount of cards that we moved. It was um, it was legit. It was a really good show for us. I feel like we keep saying that at the end of each show. It's like, oh, this is the best show we've ever had. This is the best show we've ever had. But this, this past weekend at Lansing was legitimately probably – as far as you know selling things and trading out of cards that we were no longer interested in keeping and picking up new stuff that will move at our next show it was it was stellar mm -hmm. i think the next show will be even better because jsa will be coming back in april and when they were there in january i mean they had a full crew of three people, gave them two tables to do all the, you know, authentications. And they're like, I would have stopped taking stuff a half hour after we started because there were just loads of people bringing stuff mm -hmm. in. And that's great because I have a shop. If you want to sell any of that freshly minted stuff that you just got authenticated, you know, swing it on in and we'll uh, take a look at it. Uh, there you go. Listen to the listen to the guy below me, man. Yeah, I, I'm curious, Dennis. You've been you're you're a veteran in this game. You're you've forgotten more than the three of us will ever know. Is Courtney and I are very like analytical when we're done. We're thinking about everything. Like, how can we do that better? How can we set things up better? Can we can we be friendlier? Can we provide better deals? And we're constantly adjusting and tinkering. I I, I assume. That's why we've had success because we're willing to not be so stubborn and set in our ways that if, hey, even though we thought Kobe Bryant refractors were awesome, I remember setting up at a show where we had nothing but like mid 90s refractors and, you know, numbered stuff and it did not move. It did not move. We were shocked. We thought we were gonna have the best show ever. And quite frankly, it was it was disappointing, but we've adjusted based on paying attention to what the people around us are saying. Is that like part of like the, the maturation process as a vendor is adjusting and, you know, being willing to change or are we just on a hot streak and lucky? You have to know your market. I mean, you know, if, if you, if you're trying to sell, you know, thousand dollar cards in a, in an area that's economically deprived, I mean, you're probably not going to do real well. And being able to adjust for the time of year, what sports are going on, who's playing well, who's not playing well. I mean, you know who's going to be asked about at the show. You know, now, you know, when the, the baseball classic was going on and, you know, people were talking about Trey Turner and Shohei and all that stuff. I mean, great. Put those guys out because you know that that's who people are seeing right now. And, you know, People aren't looking for John Morant right now. So, you know, put those in the box and wait a minute. And, you know, maybe he stops going to strip clubs and then, you know, we can start selling him again. But <laughs> just paying attention to the market and and knowing your audience that you're at. And you guys have been at Lansing enough now. You know what the market is. You know there's five, six, eight, ten people that come around that have the money to buy the higher end stuff. So it makes sense to bring it but you can't fill your whole showcase with it. You know, 
having the the 10 20 30 dollar cards everybody's there looking for that stuff and if it's priced right and if it's people that are relevant today that stuff's going to sell and that's all there is to it that is something that's benefited us is that we as vendors are willing to pick up some higher end cards that i know you know not a lot of people are looking or are, you know want to buy those so we've done well picking up some cards that maybe we wouldn't have had the opportunity to pick up at other places because there's so many people buying, you know, at some of the other shows, those, those higher end cards. Yeah. Well, and then Lansing, if, if you're Joe Schmo that's setting up that the, the majority of your cards are five, 10, $15 and you pull the $3,000 Luca out of a pack, you know, okay, where are you going to sell it at? You know, are you going to put it on eBay? Are you going to put it in a Facebook group or are you going to sell it to the guy that's offering you two grand for it, you know, right now in front of you. And a lot of people will move it at the show. I mean, there's plenty of guys TNT set up at the shows. Now they're spending, you know, 15 grand, 20 grand at every show and they buy good stuff. If you have good stuff and it's priced right, there's a bunch of people there with money that are that are throwing it around. So that's the only dealer. That's the only dealers we we request not to be next to is TNT, right, Jeremy? And Bernie? <laughs> yeah, you can keep you can keep Tyler the hell away from me. My <laughs> man walks up and uh, his his bankroll is a little bit bigger than mine, man. When he whips out fifty k and he's like, "Yeah, I'll buy everything." <laughs> Like man, you're stepping <laughs> up my toes. Shout out, but I, I, do, I, yeah. What's good, fellas? I, I think that's one thing that, like, as a show, I know that's something that we're talking about doing, and how you deliver that message is letting people know that. Because when we first, the first time we went to a show, I loved the idea of selling cards, but I didn't know you could just walk up to a vendor and be like, "Hey, do you want to buy it?" Like, I didn't understand the like the the etiquette that went into it. This show, what, why I find it so appealing is there's 5, 10, 15, 20 people that will spend serious money. I'm not talking $10, $20. I'm talking we'll spend five figures without hesitation. And if you know that you can do that at a show, you can always be a participant. And so I think just like, you know, stressing that collectively, we can continue to grow the show and make it bigger and better. One of those guys that I can think of easy mm -hmm. at that show that – if you have a table that has 50 grand worth of inventory and you want to go home with nothing but an empty case, you can make that happen. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not going to get a hundred percent comp on it, but you're not going to get 60% either. And they'll be like, yep, I'll take it all, you know, and here's a big fat stack of money. Let me ask you this from where Courtney and I are set up. If you looked at like what 12 o'clock would be and then over one, there was a guy who had the end cap. So he was just kitty corner from us. He did that. He sold many. He had he had a showcase and then he had boxes of like $10 sold out cards. Twice. Sold out, rebought, sold out. I, I bought from him like three times throughout the show. Yep. Easy to work with. Told him what I was trying to do. He told me what he was trying to do. And 50 cards, 30 cards, The one of the easiest – transactions i've people i've ever dealt with kim told me she bought like four collections while she was there Jeez, just yeah. like yeah. a whole boxes she's like i don't even have room in my car and then she came over and bought a whole like uh two row of our, all of our cards she had to like, she had to sell some stuff at like 2 30 because she was like i forgot to pay you and i spent all my money <laughs> and yeah, she, she came <laughs> over she came over she gave me the table money and she's like I got 15 bucks left. I'm ready. I'm good to go. <laughs> and she, she walked by. She like walked by. I'm like, Kim. And she like looked up. She's like, oh, I didn't know you were here. And I'm like, yeah. And she's like, I don't know if I have room in my car for all of the stuff that I bought. Oh, my God. That's I'm like, crazy. It's, that, it is. So one, one thing that I thought was really cool about this show was the we're starting to see more and more ladies and girls participating not just being there like as somebody who's just walking along the side but actually buying cards selling cards talking sports and i think that i think it's cool because it shows that the environment is a welcoming environment and you're starting to see more and more people so 
obviously you've got three daughters, so that's something that's kind of uh and Manny, you've got a couple of daughters, so you love to see it, right? Yep, I do. I I was my they came to the last one and uh the excitement that my four year old had when she saw Courtney's like Pixar and Disney cards what made made my day and uh her ripping Disney while we went live. The Disney uh, hundred where now they're pumped up. We, me and Courtney were ripping those things at the last uh, Lansing show um, with Haven. So that was a special moment. It was, it was super cool. I, uh, I just, I see people, I walked around the whole show. I did walk the whole show. And I, uh, as I'm like walking, I am just watching all of the transactions. I can't get over it. Like, there were points where I couldn't even walk in between people and there is space like these it is comfortably spaced it is cool this is like one good of the wi-fi most yes good wi-fi is one of the best shows as far as you know the setup obviously you spend a lot of time thinking about it the, the buyers there the tables the vendors it's not just people coming throwing some stuff down the tables you can go to almost any table and they're willing to buy they're willing to trade everything so you see all these people going up and down and, and it is just nonstop transactions. And I couldn't get over how busy it was within like 20 minutes of opening. I, you know, you see a lot of shows, it's like slow, slow, slow. And then you have like the middle part of the show where it's just packed and then slow, slow, slow. This show from like start to finish, it was busy the whole time. It was busy till about four thirty. Yeah, people yeah, were still doing just deals. Just gonna say yes. <laughs> yep. The show's over. People are still set up doing deals. I was like, "It's cool." There's a kid, Dennis, who's set up for you, uh, Manny. You'll, you're right. He was a Hispanic kid who set up. He came up and he had a travel luggage yep. along with a massive Zion case, and he came over. And he's like, "Hey, are you buying?" I'm like, "Yeah." And it took me like probably forty five minutes. Like the show was well closed. And I didn't realize he had like an actual luggage that he opened up and started pulling out more and more like and more. Kid? No, oh, he's he's, he's probably, probably like early twenties. Twenty, yeah. Uh, there was there was a ten year old kid that had his own table at the show. Oh, jeez, that is and he that came is absolutely awesome. He came into the store. He's looking at Pokemon, and he was like, you know, how much is a table for your show? And I said, well, the tables are $50. He's like, I think I would like to buy one. Aww. Like, okay. <laughs> so he gives me his money, tells me his name. I write it down. He's like, so we're all set? I'm like, yep. So he does a show. I walk by, I see him, you know, hit say hey. And at the end of the show, when I was walking back around, I was just done talking to you guys. This kid walks up to me and, like, you know, bumps me in the, ch- you know, back and looks at me all weird. And it was the kid. And I was like, hey, man, how did you do? And he, like, whispers, like, how much he sold today. And I was like, shit, that's good, man. You know, and give him a high five. And, and uh, he came into the store today. And he's like, I just came in to, you know, spend my money that I made. Aww. And he signed up for the next show. And, <laughs> yes. um, that's awesome. There was something behind the counter that my, my nephew was asking about. He's like, where'd you get this? And the kid, the 10 year old kid, was like, I got it from your mom's house last night. <laughs> <laughs> like, yes. Oh, yeah. Like, this is my favorite kid. So I gave him yes. a deal on some Pokemon stuff that he wanted because the kid's got giant balls. I love it. That is the best kid I've ever heard of. Yeah, he's awesome. He beats our kids. That, that's going to be Dennis' future employee. Dennis almost hired him on spot. Oh, for like, sure. If I wasn't worried about child labor laws, he'd be working there right now. <laughs> Here's the keys to the, the shop, kid. Bring it home. <laughs> well, while we're on the topic of kids, I, 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 it pains me that I can't think. What's the kid's name? The kid's an absolute hustler. Is it Lamar Vinny? Jackson. That's what I call him. Is that the kid? Noah. No, yeah, the Lamar Alex, Jackson kid. Alex yeah, she, she won. Oh, that, the one kid I, I, that's I, at literally every show ever. Yes. yes. With the Lamar Jackson. He came up, he yeah. came up and he tried he tried like we were in the middle of a deal and he tried doing something. And finally, like I just stopped and I told him, like, I told him straight up like this. I'm like, you don't get the child treatment anymore, dude. 
you're walking around with fifty thousand dollars in your case you might fool all these other people that think you're a sweet innocent kid you've graduated you're with the big boys now and then <laughs> like he, paused. he didn't know what to, yeah he didn't know what to say i'm like that's a compliment like you you conduct yourself like an adult so you're going to be treated like adult don't think you're going to come over here and buy a ten dollar hundred dollar cards for ten dollars and use that like right. your dimples to get anything out of me man right. <laughs> yeah Oh, I Didn't I, Court? I just just G checked his ass. Take your ass <laughs> walking. So funny because there was a guy sitting at our table. I don't think he knew who that his dad kid was. or uncle. No, no, no. Oh there, yeah, there, there was a guy sitting at our yeah. table. He's like, oh, he's just a kid. I'm like, no, that's not a kid. That's not a kid. That's a right. man. It's a 40 year old man and a 10 year old man. Child. I'm like, he's yes. a man. That's- I'm like, don't worry, he'll be fine. He'll he's gonna go home and cry to all his money and his hundred thousand dollars. Right. <laughs> that kid. That kid scares me. When I see him, I avoid him. Because how bad he hustles people. He would, <laughs> I remember at a show, I showed him like this $1,000 card. He was like, I'll give you 400 Take it or leave it. And I'm like, well, how do you, you go leave it? Huh? Yeah, I'm he gonna leave it. Like, you're right, gonna, you're right. I'm yeah. going to leave it. Yeah, 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 exactly. He, he was, and then he wouldn't give me my card back. I was like, no. He's like, all right, how about, how about four four fifty? I'm like, no, like, give me my card back. I'm leaving. Manny gets arrested because he's like wrestling a kid at a card show. It's like, he won't give it back. No. Oh, no, that, that kid, that kid would have beat Manny's ass. Well, he'd have, you know, the spear me with my his head or something. <laughs> What's up, big guy? Oh, you, know, uh, you know, Manny, uh, there was a big demand for soccer at this show, too. Yeah. Really? Which was, which, yes. which was a little bit shocking because i was talking with somebody on twitter and they were like man there's so many like soccer collectors in michigan however there's usually not a big presence at any of the shows and we had i moved the mbappe the futera golden goal Mm -hmm. never thought in a million years i'd move that that card at this show moved it man there was a lot of people looking for soccer so you kind of uh (laughs) you not being there garrett said he got hustled by a youtube kid um the YouTube kid walked was walking to the table and told my wife, "Watch this kid hustle me." He got he got me good. My wife was like, "I like that kid. He's so adorable." And we've He's all been hustled by kids, dude. Every it, single it, one uh, of us has been hustled. Garrett, by you you are in the comment section of a YouTube video of how much of a boob you are, my friend. <laughs> we we need to beat these kids down. Yep. <laughs> no, I do want to give you credit too, because like Courtney, how she's saying that the um, show was amazing. The dealers are amazing. My experience, and this was before I met Reckless, I was going to the show prior to you taking it over. There's a lot of dealers in the past, and this is like the 2020 boom, right? That weren't, they had bad comps, that didn't price their cards, that didn't really want to talk to people. So I kind of had like a bad experience, but you could tell the dynamic of the show has changed. And I don't want to be rude to the past owners because I do like them a lot, but it, you could tell that you kind of shifted this show into a positive direction. And I do want to say thank you for that. Well, I definitely appreciate that. And, you know, it's all about just staying in communication with the people that set up at the show. And Mm -hmm. if you want to be successful at the show, I can help you, but you got to be willing to help yourself. Yep. It doesn't hurt to have a Courtney out there, you know, saying hi to the kids and, you know, flirting with the guys and, you know, all that good stuff. Beating up women. Jezebel. Beating up other women. Yeah, beating up women. Yeah. You know, well, I mean, she's got to be nice to the guys. She doesn't have to be nice to the women. No, no, Courtney and is a big She's ass. definitely not starting no static with Kim because Kim's a boss and she'd take you down in about four seconds. I would never. Kim is. Kim, would- Kim throws five thousand count boxes of cards in the back seat like the nickels. She is. She no. does it, man. She is so. She's too cool. That's the thing. She is she's cool. she's way like cooler Kim. than she's me. Good people. I can't with it. She, she. She is too cool for me. I'm not cool enough to even try. She, with yeah, she is cool, but there's a lot. There's a lot of people like her that yeah. you know, guys, girls, whoever, kids, ten year olds, setting up at the show, doing the thing. You know, for any child labor people, he did have a parent, so <laughs> they were there. But <laughs> it was definitely, it's definitely fun. And everybody likes to joke around and, and mm-hmm. help people and trade. And, you know, there's a million people doing trade up challenges and videos and all that kind of stuff. And it's, it's just, just fun. fun. It's a fun it's, time. Your show, 
I think because we set up at it now so regularly, it feels like a community there. Like it really, everybody knows each other. You walk up, you're like, oh, how's your kid? You know, what's your wife up to? Oh, did you, did you close on that house you were talking about? You know, one guy, like we had a whole conversation about how he, he was like the last show he was talking about quitting his job. And this show he's like, oh, I'm full, full-time cards now. I'm like, so you, you get to know everyone and it does it. You have a, more than a lot of other shows that I go to, this one has a real sense of community. Like everybody's like, they really care about each other. That's, that's one thing that you good. hear is, Benny is like, everybody's like, oh, you're looking for this, go to this table. You're looking for this, go to that table. They're like, everybody's trying to help one another out. And yeah. to, to Courtney's point, it truly does like, it's cool. You go there and you buy cards, you sell cards, which is, which is awesome. You go home with a little bit of coin in your pocket. Great. But you feel like you're hanging out for, I mean, it went from like eight o'clock in the eight thirty in the morning to like, holy shit, it's already two o'clock. Like hadn't eaten or drinking anything. Just That's kind of like, I felt like I kind walked, of BS. And- I walked down to Auntie Anne's and they told me to go F myself because I only brought a $50 bill with me. And they're like, yeah, we can't break that. I'm like, I don't know why I thought you could. So I walked all the way back to the table and then I went back again. And then I was like, here you go. And they're like, here, we saved it for you. They were really nice. The <laughs> only cash Courtney treats 50s moment. like Manny treats pennies. You yeah, know what right. I mean? Yeah. I gave her a 20 and she's like, what the hell is this? I don't want to touch one of these things. <laughs> the only cash flow in that mall is the card show, to be honest with you. It's true. There's pizza and... The, the movie theater is pretty good, though. I yeah, do the like that. There's a new bakery. I'm going to shout out that bakery because that guy walked around. He was hustling. He was really nice. And also, like, my kids got, like, hardcore, like, insane allergies. And they uh, that bakery in the mall does, like, uh, allergy specialty baking yeah. for people. And I thought it was cool that he was kind of walking around talking to everyone with the car. So I'm like, you're smart. Like, yeah. you, got, you got Dennis over here bringing actual people into this mall. There's this is the most people that are going to be in this mall all month. And so going around and having conversations, I took his card. We'll probably order a cake from him. Do you know, do you know yeah. what they had in the mall last weekend? They, was, it, was it last weekend they had the UFC fights or MMA fights? I was in the oh. ring, man. Were you? Yeah. <laughs> no, you got you to gotta expand on this story. Yeah, they have MMA fights there, uh, Courtney. Yeah, there every going. three months. Oh, yeah. we're going. And we're they're going. legit. I watch them from the shop. You guys come on. Oh, we're coming. I, but, I yeah. love MMA. Yes. I had no idea this yeah. was a thing. My daughter, I, we set a table out, and I put a chair on top of the table, and my daughter was sitting up on top of the table in the chair, like, watching the fights. And Oh, yeah. So the promoter is Ron DeLeon, and he does it, like, every three months. That's why there was no big, giant pots in the middle of the thing, because they took them out for the cage, and then I talked them all into leaving them out. Uh, for the show and I talked to him about like you know hey man maybe I could get in the ring and you know <laughs> talk about the shop and you know the card show that I got going on so we started chopping it up for a little while and he's a cool dude and does his thing knows his shit and he has like sponsorships for his events and everything but it was too close to the event and I didn't really want to you know pay money for something and not get the full Monty on it, you know? And so during the fights on Saturday, he's walking around. He knows that I'm watching. He comes over to the shop and he's like, you know, Hey man, do you, uh, you still want to get in the ring? And I'm like, yeah, shit. Why not? And, uh, he's like, well, come on after this fight, you know, we'll get you up in there and gave me a cool intro. You know, I got to go up in there and do my thing. My daughter Snapchatted it with like a caption that was like, "Yo, that's my dad," and you know, so that was all it became cool. immensely cooler to her. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah you cool. would have saw it. Dennis sent me the the video afterwards, and like I liked how his outfit completely matched, and he had a card that had a big number two on it, and then he circled the ring yeah. one time and got out. Well, yeah, heels, right? sure. heels. He had heels on. I didn't even fall in my heels or nothing. I your your butt looks so like good in those booty shorts. Yeah, the booty like shorts. Your little booty shorts with the little bottom of your butt cheeks hanging yep. out. It was fantastic. <laughs> it was. It was pretty good. <laughs> I didn't have any. Court saw the video. Anything. It was good. The, yeah, Courtney saw the video and she's like, "Damn, that's got to be jelly because jam don't jiggle like that." 
I'm right. like, I'm like, doesn't he know people's wives watch this? Yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Sex sells, Courtney. I thought you yeah. knew that. I do yeah. know it. I do. I'm aware. <laughs> I, I do want to. Uh, you guys will all feel kind of good about this about our Mich- Michigan collect, like our collectible hobby in Michigan base. Cousin Collectibles got a hold of me um, and said they went to the Philly show and they said that they keep hearing us on how good the Lansing show is and how good the shows that we're going to, that they have a different experience at Philly and Mm -hmm. how like, it's not the same people. Dealers are overcomped. They're not willing to deal, but then they, they did give an asterisk that um, maybe it's because they're, they're vintage collectors. Tony is a vintage collector. So I do want to give you guys props and um, Dennis, especially you, because you put on the show, you could bring de- these type of dealers, but you choose not to. So I do want to give you props for that too. I heard, then- um, I heard the same about the Philly show that it's, it's a lot of like vintage, a lot of um, like, like old time, like, I don't know how to say this respectfully. It's a lot of like old hat Boomers? dealers. It's boomers. Yeah, it's a lot of like old hat dealers that have been doing it for a long, long time and are not uh, as flexible and willing to, you know, progress with the times because they are changing. And that is that is something that I have been hearing about the Philly show specifically a few times. So that is not something that was new information to me. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that either. So. For the Lansing show, I love vintage. That shit's awesome. I do too. And it's it's dried up. I mean, you know, you're not you're not finding big, huge vintage collections. You're not buying great vintage at a big margin. It's just not happening. <laughs> but if <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, come to Lansing. Yeah, you know, everything's in Lansing. Cousin yeah. says that they they don't have ring dudes and panties out yeah. enough. So yeah, we... tell them to come to Lansing. <laughs> you know, listen out, man. Michigan's yeah. where it's at. Man, Manny get up there in his menudo shirt and everything, <laughs> doing his thing. It's fine. Got a crop top. Yeah, we're at karaoke All night now. Karaoke. Yeah, he's just like, there. He's like, so, so the tits hang out the bottom though, because that's where that's where the magic is. Yeah. yeah, and the butt cheeks, butt cheeks and under boob. If you yep. oh, well, side boobs good too. We could do under boob sexier than you want to tease. You want to tease a little bit, leave a little something yep, for the you imagination. Gotta, you gotta I like side back. boob, but that's just my preference. Jeremy and I will do a wet t-shirt con- competition too. So I got ten on you, bud. <laughs> You got, well, got Manny can do, Manny can do the roller skates. Manny's Manny got the roller sand skates. Down nipples, like, you, feel it. you feel like just big, huge <laughs> those nipples. Thing, yep, those <laughs> things look like the things you find on the beach, man. It's got more bumps on it than a Braille Bible. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, Manny, you're getting sunned. Getting absolutely sunned. Next, next, next show, Tony, come to come to Lansing. You'll see a show. <laughs> Manny takes his shirt off and it's just two big nipples, no pecs at all. <laughs> see, now you got Courtney going. Now we're going really. <laughs> well, you know, you heard of like I get them started and I just like dinner go. plates. Yeah, <laughs> it's just like just dinner. <laughs> Real, you're about to say something really nice about vintage cards and then it went I was and then now we're talking about Manny's nipples. Manny's giant nipples. <laughs> that will be synonymous with vintage cards for the remainder of my life. I'll never ever it's like it now it's ingrained in my head. Anytime I see a vintage card, I'll just be like, oh big nipples. <laughs> yep. Menudo nipples. Okay, how about these vintage cards, Dennis? <laughs> I like the vintage stuff, but they are right, though, that the people that generally sell mostly vintage are usually older people that have been doing it for 40 years. And those people, their stuff is their price. You know, if I talk to Jeremy and I ask, hey, you got this at 100 you know, I want to be at 80 He's like, yeah, 80 bucks. It's all yours. You go to a vintage guy. You're like, hey, you got a price at five. 
you know, I need to be at four. And he's like, well, then you need to buy it from someone else. Yeah, vintage guys do not move on their prices. Right. And I mean, you know, a deal to them is four ninety. And you know, I mean, if you know that going in or if if you're looking for a banks rookie or something like that, and you want one that you can hold in your hand and look at and see, I mean, you know, if if they're priced at comp or close to comp, then that's about as good a deal as you're going to get on that stuff usually. But we try not to have people that, you know, hey, it comps at 500, it's priced at 1,000, mm-hmm. you know. I mean, what are you supposed to do with that, mm-hmm. you know? And those people that, you know, want to show up and just, you know, look at their cards and avoid their wives for six hours, you know, I mean, I guess if that's what you want and that's a good experience for you, that's okay. As long as you're polite to everybody, but you know, the guys that are like, well, that's the price. I don't give a shit about eBay, you know, go whatever, you know, take. There's always those guys. I don't don't even know what comps me. And I'm like, well, I I don't know how you don't know what comps mean. (laughs) Right. I mean, that's just the world that we're living in now is everybody looks at their phones. Everybody knows on a second by second basis what stuff goes for. It's almost like they're mad that they can't rip people off anymore. I mean, maybe. Maybe. Yeah. It feels that way. Like I watched a guy yell at a kid. It was like, I say kid loosely. Like the kid had to be like, uh, Wow, like like seventeen, between seventeen and nineteen, and he was looking at um, like this guy had a bunch of vintage stuff. I'm not sure specifically what the kid wanted, but it was something that was pretty liquid. Like there was, you had like the ability to buy like more than one of this card, and he's like, oh, you know, he's like they were chatting for a little bit, and I think the kid thought that he was building a rapport with this guy, and uh, this wasn't at your show. This was at a different show, and. Uh, He's like, oh, he's like, so I looked it up and the comps on this and the guy, like in an instant, his entire demeanor changed. He went from real affable, friendly guy talking about his cards, really enjoying it to just like, I don't want to hear about your comps. I don't give a shit. And he was like yelling at this kid, like to the point the kid looked startled and like stepped back. And he's like, okay. And he just like walked away. And then there were like three other people kind of standing around this guy's table. They all walked away. And right. I'm like, now you're not selling any of your cards. So I hope that was worth it because you looked like a crazy person. <laughs> well, I, I'll say the show. It was the Taylor show. It was the Taylor show. I didn't want to say it. And the Troy <laughs> show. It happened to me. So I'll say that too. <laughs> yeah. Tell me sweats and meat sticks. We'll say, say the, it. The good thing about this show is there are a bunch of good buyers there. And the dealers know who they are. Mm-hmm. And if you want to move stuff and you see those guys walking around, even if they're not stopping at your table or you don't have something that they're instantly looking for, like, you know, hey, man, I'm looking to move two grand worth of stuff, you know, they'll take a look. They're like, okay, well, I need to be at X, Y, Z price. Like, that's fine. Pick out what you want. Those people are all around. Mm -hmm. You can sell anything you want if you're willing to make a deal for somebody. Yep. I do. I feel like it's like an epiphany because I remember back in the day when your kids, you're going into the card shop, you had like, you could like guess what a card's worth or like, you know, you have Beckett or whatever. And if the the card shop owner or at a card show, the dealer's like, that's what this card's worth. You literally only have that guy's word for it, or walking around looking to see if anyone else is selling the same card for a similar amount of money. And so these guys who've been dealing for decades are setting up at these shows with these kids, this new generation of collectors who can like scan your cards with alt, you know, or Ludix, or they all take pictures now. Every single app, you can just like scan cards and see all the comps, you know price ranges what these these apps are valuing them like on whatever index they're using and it's i think that they've gotten uh, it looks like erica said it's like my way or the highway attitude but you you don't have that luxury anymore because but those there's... people won't last no. i mean the buyers today are way more informed than yes. they've ever been the dealers today that are successful 
are good people to deal with. They have this business is 100% relationship driven. And if you can't build relationships with other dealers and other buyers, then you're probably an asshole and you <laughs> won't be successful. Yeah. I, I like, I like what Erica said, by the way, um, because this is actually an experience of me when I first got in, she said, it's hard to buy from vintage sellers, not a good experience. This kind of got me off of the vintage world. And like she said, moving fast, moving forward and rather speed walk past their table. So I, I, I kind of got that same vibe when I started in the hobby. And then we got cousin collectibles that says, that has something to do with it. Buyers are much more educated now. They know that these cards tend to appreciate over time. So I just want to bring those two because it is kind of relatable of what we're talking about. I, I agree. And I have someone in here saying, so I, I got to take a little bit of, uh, I, I disagree with that comment. I don't think every new, new person in the hobby is a flipper. I'm talking about like the young, the young youthful collectors now that are collecting in a different way than how even we collected when we were kids cards are different in that like when we were kids we like dicked around with our cards we we put them in binders we you know it's not the same kids get cards now and they take care of them there's not going to be that like oh this is a rare card because it got smashed up and there's only like 10 of them that are in good shape everyone take like all these kids take care of their cards now it's not the same yeah and we're not talking about like the ones that are priced at comps we're like dennis said we're talking about the ones that have a 500 hundred dollar card kind of what cousin said and they're pricing at 1k and they're like go find another one or go do this or get out of here don't look at comps. you go, can go find go. them though that's the thing is that there's so many yeah. platforms to buy cards on. i'm yeah. not gonna buy a card for you from you for five hundred dollars over comps when mm -hmm. i can like hit buy it now on ebay and have it shipped to my house for yeah like half of that that's the kind of people we're kind of talking about i was yeah. talking about him saying uh the new generation you mean flippers and, i don't and the, the new generation i mean we're all and if you think about it every generation is a a flipper at some point if you sold a card if you sold a card for even if you want to buy another card for your pc because that's what we do you buy pc cards um we're flippers, we're investors, we're um, collectors at heart. All, all four of us, I would say. Yeah, and I there's a lot of people we... at that show that you know, like, you know, if I have a Patrick Williams that's ridiculous, well, I'm calling Jeremy, mm -hmm. and he's going to tell me what he's going to pay me for it, and he knows he's going to end up with it. And there's a bunch of people there that bring me, you know, Falcons cards, like, oh, yeah, I bought this collection, here's a stack of this and that. Cool. You know, I don't sell that stuff. Everybody knows who, you know, people's PCs are. If I get an awesome Miggy or something, I go and talk to AJ and mm -hmm. like, hey, man, you know, I got this. You know, I got that. But, you know, what do you want for it? I'm like, dude, just take it. You know, I mean, everybody knows who everybody collects. There's a and finishing thing, point for every card. Like, every something point. To somebody that you know isn't going to be sold again you know, you're going to give them a deal just so they can have it. And there's plenty of guys like that. And the guys that are buying stuff to sell to repacks or to whatever, they're offering you a fair price based on what they're going to get for it. If you want to sell it, then sell it. If you don't, that's fine. They're not going to be offended if you're like, hey, I want to hold on to this Luca or this Pat Mahomes, but I'm happy selling you the rest of them they're fine with that. And yeah. as a dealer, you know, you get to dictate which ones you want to be more flexible on as opposed to the ones you don't. And that's okay. I had a really frank think... conversation with the kid. He came up to me and he was offering me a, an amount on a card. It was like, he was like, it was like 70%. And I'm like, I'm not, I'm like, I could literally take this card and sell it to that guy walking around for the repacks for, you know, 85, 90%. They're, you know, I would rather hold on to this card that I like versus selling it. But, and then he's like, Oh yeah, fair enough. Totally get it. And that was it. I yep. think that there's like this weird um, almost perception that some of the people who are trying to make deals or like come in at 70% of comps are just like crazy or being disrespectful. I, that's not been my experience at all. I think relationship is important because quite honestly, 
the comp thing, if you're dealing with somebody who's level-headed, that's just a reference point because you have to take into account several other factors. And so, like, I, I actually meant to buy some cards from Garrett. He was set up. And, you know, he was like, hey, this is this is essentially this is my entry point. I'd like to make a little bit money. That's my comp. Yada, yada, yada. These are where the comps are. Let's work. Let's cook, as Courtney would say. And those people are going to be the people who are successful because it's a very, where do you need to be? This is what I'm trying to do. If we can make it happen, great. If not, we'll, we'll get you on the next one. Yep. Yeah, and there's a million of those guys. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, and comps too. Like you can look at a comp and be like, this comp is, you know, from preseason. There's not another one available. I know I'm a little like I'm over that price, but you know, there's four more on eBay that are a thousand dollars more than what I'm asking. So you you literally can't get it right now for less than what I'm selling it for. And I know it's over the last comp, but we can meet somewhere in the middle. And I think that that's fair. And that's a, a conversation you can have. But the second somebody's like, oh comps and you're like no i don't want to talk to you ever again because you said the word comp you know you're you're kind of like shooting yourself in the foot yep yeah (laughs) manny one thing i just football was hot dude football was absolutely hot if you had football you sold quickly yeah that's i mean Kids love football. I would we figured that out, right? Everyone's starting to love football. And I don't think there's like, you know how we talked about there's an off season, right? But I think with the product coming out right now during the off season, there's really not that that's why everyone's still collecting it. I that's my theory. Um maybe you I actually guys said the same thing to Jeremy. I'm like, because I felt like everyone's buying football and this would it is the off season. And I'm like, everybody's buying football now. Like I have the last three shows I've been at. That's all anybody wants to buy. Yep. So maybe football isn't exactly the same kind of situation as like some of the other sports. Cause I mean, you only get 16 games. So people are waiting 17, and anticip- 17 sorry. Um, anticipating. Yeah. <laughs> Be better, are- Courtney, step your game up. <laughs> <sighs> it's always football season, Courtney. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Courtney. Well, Jeremy, do you have uh, any last thoughts, Jeremy? I know we're hitting that hour mark. No, it's it, no, it's an incredible show. Dennis does a hell of a job. I encourage anybody to make the trek out there, see it, have all the amenities. There's a lot of people who I schooled on, like, hey, go get out of here. There's restaurants everywhere. Come back, refresh, and then just feast from three o'clock to four o'clock. People are just trying to make that that last buck. So, no, super proud and humble to be a part of the show, and uh, that's all I have. Uh, Dennis, do you want to plug where uh, where people can follow you, um, get information for the card show? Avery Shoebox Cards on Facebook, Avery Shoebox on Instagram, and Avery Shoebox on TikTok, pretty much Avery. wherever. Same on eBay. There you go. You can hey. also follow him at ringdudes.com. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah definitely, for sure. <laughs> I triumphant MMA return. Yeah. <laughs> And Court Court, where can people follow you? Um, you can check me out, obviously, Reckless Cards and at Dangerous Games Podcast on Instagram. Um, our next episode, we have Break and Wax on as a guest, so that'll be fun. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, go follow everyone. And, Jeremy, what do, what do you want the people to do? Trash! The like button. Is that what you get the kids to do? That's, we're going to have a million followers in no time. Yeah. Just screaming smash. Dude, you scared me. You scared the crap out of me. There was I'm like my computer shook. There's an echo in your laptop from him. <laughs> and, and with that, I hope you guys enjoyed your hobby release, and we will talk soon. Bye, everyone. From Vegas.